the problem statement is a hotel manager has to process n advance bookings of rooms for the next season his hotel has only c rooms bookings contain an arrival date and a departure date he wants to find out whether there are enough rooms in the hotel to satisfy the demand so we need to write this program with the complexity of n log n okay so in simple terms uh, we we are given some arrival and departure date arrays uh, which contains of the starting date and the ending date okay and uh, we are having only c available rooms so we need to check whether the uh, whether the requests can be handled provided with the c rooms okay uh, one thing we need to make sure is that uh, there should not be any overlapping here like if someone is already occupied a room so some other person or some other booking cannot happen in that room okay so this is the actual concept here now this question has been asked in microsoft goldman and yeah so let's have a look at the sample cases so suppose input one is uh, this is the uh, arrival dates and this are the departure dates okay so how to understand this input uh, if the first booking arrives at one and departs at two then the second booking arrives at three and departs at six and the third booking at five and departs at eight okay so c equals to one means we have only one room available with us we need to take into we need to tell whether these requests can be handled or not okay so let's have a look the first booking comes at one and ends at two okay so we have one route we will allocate it to it then uh, after two uh, the room gets empty okay then again the second booking comes at three and ends at six so for three to six this is occupied now the third booking comes at five so as you can see there is overlapping here the third booking comes within an interval the of the second booking okay so that's why the third booking cannot happen and hence we return zero because at day five there are two guests in the hotel but we have only one room because c equals to one so this is the problem statement in general terms so let's first discuss the logic so uh, as you know that we are provided with some interval arrays which is the start date and the end date so we will first sort these arrays okay so why sorting because we need to make sure that the uh, that the bookings are happening in the uh, in the sequence they they appear okay so first we'll write a custom sort method to sort all the intervals on the basis of the smaller starting time first why smaller starting time first because we need to handle each and every request and we should not make some request pending uh, instead of moving to the next one okay now the second step is make use of a min heap priority queue to store the ending times of the ongoing jobs in ascending order so why we are making use of a min heap here so as you know that min heap has the property that whenever you insert some elements into it it all automatically gets sorted in the increasing order and the minimum element stays at the top okay so whenever we need to get access to the minimum element so far we can just access the topmost element or the first element of the queue and we will get access to the minimum element so i'll understand uh, i'll help you understand while we are making use of priority queue here okay so the third step is if the starting time of the current job is greater than or equal to topmost element of the min heap then pop the min element from the min heap okay so why this step if the starting time of the current job is greater than or equal to topmost element topmost element would be the minimum ending time so far okay so when the current job comes the starting time is 3 and the ending time of the previous job was 2 so as we know that this is greater than this so it means that the room is empty and we can allocate so that's why we'll pop the minimum element from the min heap as this request is handled successfully that's why we pop out that element at any given instance if the size of the min heap represent the size of the number of rooms occupied why so because the ending time in the min queue does not get popped out if it is greater than the uh, starting time of the current job so this states that the room is still occupied and hence uh, the size of the min heap at any instance gives us the size of uh, gives us the number of rooms occupied okay so if this size at any instance exceeds the number of available rooms we will just return zero because it is not possible to uh, handle them and if all the requests can be handled then return one so we'll further understand this while writing the code so let's move on to the coding section okay so let's write int me let's take into account the given input only so one three five two six eight int a equals to 
int array a equals to one three five and the departure with d s three is two six eight two comma six comma eight okay so how to understand this this is the starting time this is the ending time for the first request similarly for second request similarly for third request okay now let's take int c equals to number of available rooms which are one in this case c equals to one and let's call a method uh let's hotel and this will return boolean okay c out hotel booking uh, with the vector so we'll pass the uh, starting array the departing array and the number of rooms available okay so let's make it vector in vector okay so now let's uh, put semicolon here and just return zero as int uh, as return type of main is int here okay now let's define a method so the actual code will go here we need to return boolean type zero for it cannot be handled and one for it can be handled hotel booking so we need to take vector int arrival vector int departure and int t to state the number of available rooms okay so now as told earlier first we need to sort these arrays in the form of increasing uh in the form of increasing uh, arrival time okay but as you know that uh, it has been already been provided in the form of increasing so no need to sort it on our own okay so after this is being done let's create a pair vector of pair to handle each of the request where first element would be the arrival time and second element would be the departure time okay so let's first take into consideration what is n here and a equals to a dot size which gives us the number of requests so vector of pair of type int comma int because it stores the interval let's define it p of size n because there are n requests so n internals intervals sorry and int i equals to zero i is less than n i plus plus so let's push all the request as a pair into this vector so p of i equals to what would be the pair here let's make pair what would be the pair here a of i the starting time comma the departure time a of i comma d of i so by this we have converted the intervals into a pair of starting and ending time for each of the requests now let's create a priority queue to to store the ending times of the current requests priority queue so a min heap is uh, represented in the form of a priority queue in c++ and it will store int vector int and greater int why greater int in order to store it as a min heap for max heap we just need to mention int and vector int but for min heap we need to mention this particular method that you could read more about uh, in order to understand this syntax okay so this is the logic we have created the min heap of type int now let's push the ending time of the first request as it is being handled definitely because we have one room and it will be handled so second refers to the second element of each of the pair which is the departure time okay so that's why we have pushed p of 0 dot second which is the ending time of the first request okay so now let's loop for each of the request int i equals to 1 why from 1 because we have already handled the 0th or the first request which is at 0 index i is less than n i plus plus so we are looping through each of the requests now as mentioned if if p of i first i'll write then i'll explain if p of i dot first is greater than or equals to q of what q dot top so if this is happening then only q dot pop 
else always push the ending time of the current request into the min heap p of i dot second why second because second element stores the ending time of each of the request and if at any time q dot size which is the uh, which stores the number of uh, requests getting handled so if it is greater than t which is the number of available rooms then just return false and it cannot be handled otherwise if all the requests are handled just return true okay so let me explain you this particular part why this is giving error to do this okay so what we are doing here as i mentioned that for priority queue we always store the ending time of the requests that are being handled okay so as we are handling the first request that's why we push the ending time of the first request then we move from 1 to n minus 1 which is the second request at index 1 at each time we check whether the starting time of the current request is greater than or equals to the ending time of the all the previous request so q dot top stores the minimum among all the request that has been handled okay so why minimum because minimum uh, helps us free out a particular room because if first room was occupied from 1 to 2 and then the second room comes at 3 so we know that from 1 to 2 it was occupied and at 2 it was unoccupied okay so now we know that we can handle it so if this is the case then we can just empty that room okay so q dot pop remove this ending time from the queue and for each of the request irrespective of whether this condition is true or false we just need to push the ending time of this request why so because we are handling this particular request so we need to put its ending time because this request is being handled so its ending time is currently occupied okay so that's why we push here and if at any time the size of the queue is greater than t so we need to return false why so because the number of rooms required to handle this request is exceeding the number of available rooms so all the requests cannot be handled and return false and if none of this thing happen like if we traverse through all of the request so if we are able to handle all of the request just return true stating that all this uh, all these things can be handled so let's try this code .cpp -oa. so compiled successfully let's run it zero why zero stating that it cannot be handled why so first is 1 to 2 so first room occupied and there is only one room then at 2 it gets empty so 3 to 6 can also be handled with one room but when 5 to 8 comes so it cannot be handled so let's just make it what 8 to 10 and recheck our code so compile run one why because it can be handled first request is 1 to 2 then it is get empty 3 to 6 then it gets empty 8 to 10 then it's get empty so these requests can be handled with the help of a single room i hope that you have understood this concept so just have a look at this once once more on your own and then you'll get to learn more about it thank you for listening have a great day